Shabbat Shalom. Hope all is well. Most high blessed to all the believers and the truth seekers who are out there trying to get an understanding of um, the right path in which we should be going. Um, today we're going to be touching on a very, very touchy topic as it relates to um, the world and the customs of the world. Birthdays. Birthdays are one of the most celebrated um, customs of the world today. So we're going to just prove to you why birthdays are not of the most high Yahweh. It's not biblical and it should not be kept um, as if you are a believer of the most high God. So we're going to get into it today. Um, now, I'm going to give you some facts. This is not my opinion. So if you have an issue with um, what I'm bringing out, these are just information from different scholars um, as well as through scripture. So don't come at me. Come at the most high and let him hand and you handle it with him. Um, of course, throughout the Bible, it tells us do not uh, participate, partake, partake in days in which the most high does not accept. And he does not accept the days in which you are partaking in and saying it is good or in um, the will of the most high and which is not. So um, we're just going to pretty much prove to you why birthdays should not be kept and why you should not be celebrating these days. So, of course, at the beginning of every lesson, I'm going to start off with these three verses. I pretty much think these verses go hand in hand with one another as you are studying the truth um, in which these other religions does not teach you. Uh, well, these religions, I'm not saying other because being a Hebrew Israelite is not a religion. It is a custom. It is a heritage and it's a faith. So um, these religions are pretty much steering you away from the truth and how to seek truth and um, this is what you should be doing in order to gain an understanding of the scripture so um, Isaiah 28 at 10 Isaiah 28 at 10 says for precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line line upon line here a little and there a little so this is pretty much telling you how you should be reading and getting an understanding of the scripture if you are studying a specific concept, you need to find other accounts in the Bible that pertains to that specific concept for you to gain a better understanding of that um, of that concept. So if you read it from Genesis to Revelation, you know, chapter by chapter, you're not going to get a good understanding of those specific concepts in which you are studying. So you have to read it exactly how it says here, precept upon precept line upon line of course you have to get it into context so that's what the line upon line means um second timothy chapter 2 at 15 second timothy chapter 2 at 15 study to strew thyself approved unto god the most high yah a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly divided the word of truth so it's the same you have to study this bible you have to keep your head in it you have to be able to meditate throughout it in order to get an understanding. Prove yourself worthy. You have to study not just the scripture, but actually study lineage. You have to study um, her um, different cultures and heritages throughout the world as well as um, as it relates to history. So you have to study to see where prophecy fits. You have to study to see where you are in the Bible as far as it relates to lineage and you have to study to find truth and understanding. So, of course, if you study this Bible and you, you know, you really dig into it, you can rightly divide the word of truth to get an understanding of specific concepts. So that pretty much goes back to the, pro the precept upon precept um, verse um, Isaiah 28 verse 10. Ecclesiastes 12 at 13. Ecclesiastes 12 at 13 is pretty much saying, what is the duty of man? In order to grab an understanding, you must do the following. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh, fear the Most High, and keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. 
If you follow in the laws that the commandments the Most High gave you, He will help you and guide you through this um, scriptures and to give you an understanding. This is the whole duty of man is to follow His commandments and to fear Him and believe Him as the one true God. Now. As it relates to what's going on in the world and what we partake partake in as far as our customs and our holidays and our religions, the Bible says, do not follow the ways of the heathen. Do not go in the ways of the heathen. Again, the heathen are the people who do not believe in the law that the commandments the Bible has um, told us to keep. They put their own philosophy, their own beliefs, their own paganism into uh, what you partake partake in today. So the Bible says, do not go in the ways of these specific people, but to keep yourself in the scriptures and follow what the Most High tells you to do. The law, statutes, commandments, and as well as the holy days that are within scripture. Jeremiah chapter 10 at verse 2 and 3. Jeremiah chapter 10 at verse 2 through 3. This says Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen. These are the people who do not believe in keeping the law, statutes, commandments, the Bible speak. This is pretty much the religions of the world because they do not keep the Torah. They don't. So you're following into these religions into these man-made philosophies, into these paganist, paganistic ways of the world that does not align with the ways in which the Most High wants you to walk in. Thus says Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, for the customs of the people, the heathen, are vain. They're deceiving you into partaking in or participating in these days that are actually aligned to their pagan beliefs. And we'll get to that in a minute. John chapter 4 at 22 through 24. John chapter 4 verses 22 through 24. Ye worship, ye know not what. You are worshiping what you truly do not understand. You have to study and research everything in which you are partaking. Everything you're partaking is not in the eyes or the sights or the will of the Most High Yahweh. If it's not in Scripture, you should not be partaking it. If it's not in Scripture, you should not be partaking in it or participating in it. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. So it's saying we know we worship as it relates to the Bible. For salvation is of the Jews, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers of the Bible shall worship the Father, Yahweh, in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahweh is a spirit and that worship him and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The truth is within the scripture. If your customs are not within the scripture, then of course it is pagan and it is not of the most high God. 1 John chapter 2 at verse 15 through 17. 1 John chapter 2 at verse 15 through 17. Love not the world. So the Bible mentions that the Most High has given the earth unto the heathen. So, of course, the customs of this earth and of the world that we see today and that most of us are partaking in is the customs of the world, the customs of the heathen, the customs of um, the rudiments of man. So love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, if any man love the world that we partake in today, the love of the Father is not in him. If you partake in these days and these customs and 
the ways of the heathen, the love of the Most High Yahweh is not within you. That means you're going against the Most High's will, his law, statutes, and commandments, and holy days that he gave us. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of the Most High abid forever. So the will of the Most High, of course, is the laws, that's the commandments the Bible gives us, which also is the commandments of the holy days. Those are part of the law. Every religion does not follow the will of the Most High God. Why is this? It's because they do not follow the laws, statutes, commandments the Most High has written. That's why I left Christianity. That's why I left religion. I've researched a good number of religions. And I can say, just like the Pope says, they all worship the same God. He's right. They all do worship the same God. And it's not the God of Israel. It's not the God of the Bible. Lord, God, and Allah, and some other terms that I, I'm trying to keep this lesson within an hour. And we can get to that in another lesson. Lord is pertaining to another God. God, as far as capital G-O-D, is pertaining to another God. Allah is pertaining to another God. It does not pertain to the God of Israel, which goes by the name of Yahweh or Yah. Two different gods, man. Two different gods. So, of course, if you want to look into that, please do some research into that. Um, but as far as I mentioned, I will do a class on that pretty soon, maybe next week. Um, Lord, as it relates to the Most High, uh, and how it connects to other religions in um, in the world. Birthdays mentioned in the Bible. So, of course, every time birthdays are mentioned, it is never linked to the celebration or the the holy day of which you should celebrate your birthday in scripture. So it is not mentioned anywhere that Israelites kept a celebration of their birthday. Again, Israelites are the people of the book and the chosen people. So if you are considering yourself an Israelite or a believer of the book, you should not be partaking in these specific days. So every time birthdays were mentioned in the Bible, of course, it is always mentioned as it relates to a pagan custom and as well as being cursed. Um, so, of course, we're going to start on the first one, the celebration of pagans, the kings and the pharaohs. Of course, these are people who are not of the Hebrew Israelite faith. These are people who are pagan, who believe in other gods or multiple of gods. So Genesis chapter 40 at verse 19 through 20. Genesis chapter 40, verse 19 through 22. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Now, let me get into this. I, I'm not going to take too much time into this, but. The Bible mentioned, and, and this is another alignment as it relates to prophecy in Deuteronomy 28. Uh, here it says in Egypt that people were hung on trees and the birds, of course, ate of it. This is the same exact alignment as it relates to Deuteronomy 28, where it says they will be taken back into Egypt again on slave ships. This goes back into what Egypt means as it relates to scripture. It means bondage. It means slavery. So... This is aligning what happened to us in the transatlantic and the trans-Sahara slave trade with the so-called um, Christians of Christianity and the Muslims of Islam. Um, this pretty much aligns with what happened to us in America as it relates to us being hung on trees and our caucuses being there um, eaten up by prey. So. 
it's no uh, way to say that America is not the modern day Egypt. Um, anyway, let's get back into the lesson. Um, and it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday. So this is saying on Pharaoh's birthday, this is what happened, that he made a feast unto all his servants. So he made a festival to celebrate his birthday. And he lift up the head of the chief butler and the chief and the chief baker among the, his servants. And he stored the chief butler into his restored his chief butler into onto his butlership again. So told him to go back to his job and gave the cup unto Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker. So he hung the chief baker in honor of his day of birth, which was interpreted by Joseph in a dream. So this is saying that on his birthday, he made a feast day and he hung someone in honor of his birthday. Another account of birthdays in the Bible relates to um, Herod. So this is Matthew chapter 14, verse 6 through 11. Matthew chapter 14, verse 6 through 11. But when Herod's birthday was kept, the keeping of Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias uh, danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she began before being before instructed of her mother said give me here john baptist's head in a charger so this is pretty much saying that the daughter wanted that wanted the head of john the baptist in honor of herod's birthday and the king was sorry nevertheless for the oath's sake and them which sat with him at meat so again this is saying that a feast was given unto um, Herod on his birthday, it says with them and them which sat with him at meat. So it's pretty much saying a feast day. He commanded it to be given given to her and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. So again, another person died in honor of someone's day of birth. And his head was brought into a charger and given to the domestic. And she brought it to her mother. So again, we see that a pagan's birthday was kept. A feast day was given upon this day. And somebody was killed on in honor of this specific birthday. Another encounter of birthdays in the Bible is through the prophet Job. So this is where Job cursed his own date of birth, which is pretty much in line with that the birthday is pretty much um, worthless. Um, John chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. John chapter 3, verse 1 through 6 states, after his opening, open Job, after his, after this, excuse me, I'm trying to read too fast. After this opened Job his month. So this is pretty much the month of his birthday. And cursed his day. He cursed his birthday. And Job spake and said, Let thy day perish wherein I was born. So this is pretty much make sure that the day of birth was destroyed. Okay. Make it um, not worthy. And the night in which it was said, There is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not Yahweh regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud upon uh, dwell upon it. So it's pretty much saying let the day of birth be darkened. Make just make it just just not worth worth worthwhile. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night. Let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined upon the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. So it's pretty much saying your birthday is worthless. Like, <coughs> excuse me. 
So he cursed his own birthday, saying that let it be perished, like let it be destroyed. Let darkness be upon it. Never let light shine upon it. What does this mean? Should you celebrate this day as it relates to your birthday? If Job cursed his day and he was a prophet, he was a prophet upon the most high God through the lineage of Israel, the Israelites. If he cursed his day, why shouldn't you? As a believer of the most high God. Another account of birthdays in the Bible goes back to King Solomon. King Solomon mentions a person's date of death, day of death, is more honorable than the day of birth. So this is in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 at 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 at 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. So this is pretty much saying that the date of someone's death is more worthy than the date of one's birth. That means the day of death should be honored more than the day of birth. But in today's world, everyone's birthday is celebrated more or honored more than someone's death. Because usually when we have someone's death, we just have um, a funeral and then that's it. We don't honor them every year. But as it relates to the calendar, we see a lot of birthdays on the calendar. You know, um, um, we see days observed like MLK Day in observance of Martin Luther King's birthday. So you're telling me the day of birth is more honorable than the death. Um, we see other birthdays like George Washington's birthday and all these other birthdays on the Roman calendar, but we do not see anything about death. But death should be the one more honorable than anyone's birthday. Um, just some precepts upon this um, verse, uh, Philippians 1 at 23. For I am in a strength um, betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with the Mashiach, Messiah, Yeshua, which is far better. So this is saying that the date of birth and when you are uh, within the, the presence of the Messiah is more honorable. Revelation chapter 14 at 13. Revelation chapter 14 at 13. And I hear a voice from heaven saying upon me, write, blessed are the dead which die in the most high from here forth. So if you are a believer of the most high God, following the laws and commandments the Bible gives you, your death is blessed. It doesn't say that your date of birth is blessed. Your works unto your date of death is more honorable than you just being born to the earth. You have to work. Your date of birth is nothing. It's worthless in the sight of the most high God. Your work unto your death in the eyes and the statutes and the commandments of the laws of the most high is what's going to cause you to be blessed. Ye says the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Here we have um, a very good book that I would highly recommend you all to get. Um, if you are a believer of the one true God, Yahweh, um, the works of Joseph, Josephus. This is a very good book for you to have um, and read upon, especially as it relates to these customs in which you are partaking in. But I'm going to um, just specifically point out this specific quote from um, the text. Um, from the text, The Works of Josephus by William Wishton. Um, it states, nay, indeed, the law does not permit us to make festivals, feast days, celebrations, at the births of our children. So this is pretty much saying that the law does not permit us to make these celebrations upon 
someone's date of birth. How the Most High feel about your unbiblical feast days? So throughout the Bible, his, the Most High mentions that um, your burnt offerings on these specific days in which you keep would not be accepted. Um, I'm not going to get into those verses because I'm trying to keep this um, lesson within an hour, but we can do a class on specific holidays and holiday, which I already have. I just got to put it into a PowerPoint presentation because I did this, um, this lesson multiple times before. Um, but I can do that later on um, on another Shabbat. Um, but the Most High does not accept any birth offerings or feast days in which you are um, praying towards him for these specific uh, celebrations if they are not aligned to the Bible. So any a specific holy day, well, holiday you keep that is not aligned to the holidays of the scripture, the Most High does not accept and he will pretty much disregard your prayers and your um, prayer upon that food in which you are eating. So I'm going to just specifically point out this verse. Isaiah chapter 1 at verse 14 through 15. Isaiah chapter 1 at verse 14 through 15. Yo, new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. So your customs in which does not align with the Bible and your feast days that does not align with the Bible, the most high hates. Don't get mad at me. I'm just reading the scripture. Take it up with the most high. Yo, new moons and your appointed feast, may my soul hate it. So he hates these days if they're not um, given upon him and his holy days within the Bible. They are a trouble upon me. They are deceiving our people. They are a trouble unto the most high God. Again, don't get mad at me. Take it up with the most high. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth thy hands in prayer on these so-called feast days that you are keeping, if you are praying upon the, the, the burnt offerings, the food in which you are making and making it good unto the most high God, he's not going to take it because it's not aligning to the laws that the commandments the Bible speaks of. And when ye spread forth thy hands in prayer, that's what it means. I will hide my eyes from you. That means he will ignore your prayers. He will close your eye. He, you don't, he, you, he do not know you. I will hide my eyes from you. Yeah, when ye make many prayers, you're praying over your food in which for in which you are making for these customs that are not pertaining to the Bible. Yeah, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. The Most High does not care about your man-made feast days, Christmas, man-made pagan feast day, Easter, man-made pagan feast day, the worship of pagan gods. Thanksgiving as we know it today is not in alignment of scripture. This is a pagan feast day. Pagan New Year's in January. That is a pagan feast day. July 4th is not in alignment with the Bible. This is feast days the Bible does not say you should keep. And nowhere it does it do you see birthdays. So guess what? It is a pagan man-made philosophy feast day. Whenever you pray upon the food, upon that day, upon that custom, the, the Most High does not hear it and he does not bless it. Your prayers are considered an abomination because you are partaking, partaking in abominations the Most High speaks of. These feast days that you are appointing. That's what Yahweh, the Most High God, thinks of worldly customs and your celebrations. If you are not celebrating the holy days within the Bible, you are not of the Most High God. You are considered an abomination. Your prayers are not heard and he closes his eyes towards you. You 
do not know him, neither do he know you. Don't get mad at me. This is in scripture. Take it up with the most high. It's not that hard to, to, to accept. It's not that hard to, to, to see that what you are partaking in does not align with scripture. So obviously, there is some other meaning to the days in which you are partaking in. That's why you have to research everything in which you are uh, partaking in and participating in and celebrating and worshiping. These holidays in which you are keeping it's not biblical, which means it is not of the most high God. It is not in the alignment with scripture, and it is not an alignment with the laws, statutes, and commandments the most high has given us. It's not. If you can prove to me it is, I will celebrate these days. If you can prove to me in scripture that these so-called holidays and birthdays and any other days in which you partaken in is in alignment with the scripture and the law, I will celebrate your days. If you can tell me in which your customs are in alignment with the Bible, I will believe in your customs and I will believe in your God. Like I mentioned, these religions have their own man-made philosophies and their pagan beliefs embedded into their religion and using the scripture for their behalf by changing things and saying that things are done away with. It's not that hard to research this. If you believe that your religion is the truth, Prove to me that everything you keep in those religions, everything that you believe aligns with the scripture. Old Testament, New Testament, so-called New Testament, so-called Old Testament, so-called the Apocrypha, and so-called lost, lost books. If you can prove to me that your customs are of the most high God and your religion is the truth, I will believe in your God. And I've did research into these religions and their customs. They're not in alignment with the Bible. It's not. They're not. And it's pretty easy to see. So our people are just ignorant and okay to be ignorant. They don't see a problem with their ignorance. They say they believe in the one true God, but do not keep his laws. They say they believe in the one true God, but keeping customs that does not align with scripture. All I can say is prove me wrong. Break away from your worldly mindsets and your worldly customs. Because they're not of the most high. They're not. Origins of birthdays. So these are just different accounts from different scholars um, as it relates to uh, where birthdays come from and um, and what it aligns to. Um, the Encyclopedia Americana 1991 edition states the ancient world of Egypt, Greece, Rome and Persia celebrated the birthdays of gods, kings, and nobles. So throughout the, um, if you do research into these other religions like um, the religion of um, Egypt, um, Greece, Rome, actually history into these um, 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 countries and areas in Persia as well, you will see that they worship multiple gods, pagan gods. And they worship their date of birth and their kings, as we saw from Rome and um, the pharaoh in Egypt. These birthdays were kept in honor of those specific gods. Um, 
So pretty much you're saying that you are a God and that you should be above the most high God who tells you what to keep and what you should do and what you should not do. That's that's quite interesting to um, to say that you believe in the one true God in his scripture, but you are pretty much putting yourself above the most high. Authors uh, Raph and Adelin Linton reveal the underlying reason for this. In their book of the lore of birthdays, they wrote, Mesopotamia and Egypt, the cradles of civilization, were also the first lands in which men remembered and honored their birthdays. So this is the first times in which birthdays was kept. So of course, this is the times in which calendars were made. So the people of Mesopotamia and Egypt were the first ones to celebrate um, and remember and honor um, birth um, beings' birthdays. The keeping of birthday records was important in ancient times, principally because a person because a birthday was essential for the casting of a horoscope. So, of course, this is going into witchcraft, which the Bible mentions. Horoscopes and astrology goes into the worship of the stars, which is forbidden, as well as witchcraft, which is mentioned in the Bible. That's a whole other class. We can get to that as well later on in other Shabbats from here on out. So, there is a direct connection between the pagan practice of birthday celebrations and astrology. So this is where these um, um, horoscopes come in, these um, zodiac signs uh, like uh, Capricorn, Leo, Cancer, all this. It goes back to paganism and the worship of multiple gods, sun gods, moon gods, star gods, planet gods. Um, and I, like I said, I've been doing some research right now into the Quran and Islam and pre-Islamic um, religion. That's what they did. They worship the stars and the moon and other um, pagan gods. And that's where Islam came forth as it relates to um, the moon god. But that, that can be a whole different class as well. Um, so the last point is just pretty much going back to the uh, works of Jose Josephus. Um, that same quote that I mentioned um, with the works of Josephus. If you want to read more about that, that's in book two of the works of Josephus, section 26. Here is just some images that I found on Google um, about the orders of birthdays. I really like this one, the larger one, because it pretty much outlines the, um, the, out, the, the timeline of these specific um, origins. Um, if you want to look more into that, the link is at the bottom of that picture. Um, happy birthday to all.com. Um, it's pretty much just a brief history of birthday celebrations. So, of course, there were no um, early birthday celebrations or in early age before calendars were invented. Um, so yeah, there was no birthday celebrations at that time. Then the Egyptians, of course, they were the first ones to, um, one of the first groups to celebrate birthdays back in 3000 BC. Uh, of course, the Pharaoh kept his birthday. Then of course, the Greeks started theirs. Well, actually the um, Mithras, they, uh, the cult of Mithras um, started birthday celebration in common for common man. So this is exactly where common man began uh, celebrating their own birthdays, and that was in 1400 BC. Then, of course, um, the Greeks joined into this birth celebration of gods and goddesses um, at that time, so they worshiped the birthday of their pagan gods and goddesses. And this is also where birthday cakes come from, um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Then, the Romans in 70, um, 753 BC started celebrating birthdays um, and anniversaries of things and um, events and people. So, of course, this all goes back to uh, Egypt. Then, of course, the pagans, people who believe in multiple gods, started believing or uh, um, celebrating their god's birthday, um, as well as um, birthdays being a pagan ritual to ward off evil spirits. 
that's quite interesting. Um, so that's just the brief timeline of early birthday celebration and the origins of birthdays. Um, just some information that you can research for yourself. Um, I also researched all this, and this is pretty much in alignment of what I researched. Um, and also, toward the right, it's a little picture of um, birthdays. Um, now, the fertility god, which is known by many different names um, throughout different cultures throughout the, um, the old world, um, Ishtar, which is Easter, which is the Roman Greek um, I think the Roman one, I can't remember. Um, the Roman fertility god, which is celebrated during Easter, Ishtar, Easter. Um, that is the um, worship of the fertility god, and that is where um, pretty much birthday started as it relates to the um, the Greeks. Um, history of birthday cakes can be traced back to the ancient Greeks, um, who made round or moon shaped honey cakes and or bread and looked it up to um to the temple of their um their fertility god which was another god of moon of the moon so of course many cultures had different names of specific gods um just like um islam um hubble which also goes by other names in in is in pre-Islamic um, religion. Allah is his name as well. Um, so basically, they're pretty much worshiping the moon god. All these religions are pretty much in alignment with one another. So they're pretty much the crafty council in which the Bible speaks of in Revelation. So um, yes, yeah, another class as well. So um, just be on the lookout for that. Um, they even placed candles on the cake to make the cake glow like the moon. So the birthday um, candles was brought forth because they wanted the cake to glow like the moon. Even early Muslims did not celebrate birthdays. So here are just some, um, some quotes from writings of some Muslim writings. Um, Mentioning that um, Muslims didn't celebrate their birthday, and it was basically a sin to do so. Um, and I just wrote this; I had this in there because I'm doing some research into Islam and the Quran and the false prophet of Muhammad. Um, so there's Muslims out there who celebrate their birthday but don't even follow their own customs. Which is the same exact thing Christianity is doing is that they're worshiping or celebrating their birthday, but it's not mentioned in the Holy Bible. So of course, all this is being um, like you know, this being deceitful. Um, these religions are celebrating days in which the Bible does not align to, but they say they believe in the same God. Which is, this is true. They do believe in the same God, but it's not the God of the Bible. Um, they believe in a pagan God. That's who they believe in. And and that's going to be a whole nother class, which we can get into um, next, Sabbath, next Sabbath, which is Lord versus the um, Lord of the Bible. No, Lord versus the God of the Bible. Um, when we get into that um, and the Quran as well, we can get into the Quran as well since I've been looking into that. Um, but yeah, these religions do not keep the days in which the Most High tells them to keep in Scripture. So the Quran tells Muslims to always refer back to the book to figure out what you should and should not be doing. But there are many contradictions throughout the Quran that tells them to do things that are not in alignment with the Bible and the Torah. Um but that's a whole other lesson as well. But of course, you can read through these. These are just some quotes from writing Muslim writings about celebrating of birthdays and anniversaries. All right. So this is the most important part, which the most um, important topic or part of this lesson is what does 
the satanic religion say about birthdays. So of course, I am I got that quote from out of the satanic Bible. No, I do not believe in this book as it relates to being a, 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 a actual religion. Um, but I do believe the things that are stated here as it relates to the customs of the world. Um, I just ordered, I ordered this book a couple of years ago, probably like two or three years ago, and I've just been reading through it to see just what we should and what we shouldn't be doing in the world as it relates to the Bible. And a lot of the things going on in this book is actually going on in the world today. So if you want to research and look into this as part as your study, that's pretty much why I got this is to study to prove myself worthy, figure out what I should and shouldn't be doing and connect things to what's happening in history and in the world today. Whether you want to get this, it is the Satanic Bible. And I got this off of, I think, Amazon for like $12. Um, but I'm going to just focus on um, the part about the Bible, um, about the birthdays. Um, and that's going to be on page uh, 96 as it relates to the holidays in which the satanic religion keeps. Um, and I'm probably, I'm probably going to read all of this. You know, I'm reading all this. Um just to put into context. So the the satanic Bible mentions days in which they keep or they take as holy days in their religion. The highest holiday in the satanic religion is the birthday. So let's read the um, this quote from it. Again, it's going to be on page 96. The highest of all holidays in the satanic religion is the date of one's own birthday that is on the first line of this chapter the highest of all holidays in the satanic religion is the date of one's own birthday this is in direct contradiction to the holy of holy days of other religions of course like christmas and other holidays and other religions this is in a total direct contradiction of the um, those holidays, which defy a particular God who has been created in an anthropomorphic, I can't even pronounce that word, form of their own image, thereby showing that the ego is not really buried. Hmm. The Satanists feel why not really be on honest, and if you are going to celebrate a God in your image. Why not create that God as yourself? So you're making yourself God. You're worshiping yourself during this day in which the Most High does not condone. He do not want anyone above him. So you're pretty much making yourself a God and saying, I'm honoring myself. Hmm. Every man is a God. If he chooses to recognize himself as one. So the Satanist celebrates his own birthday as the most important holiday of the year. So this is the most, the highest of the Satanic holidays is your birthday, which a lot of us celebrate. Most of us celebrate. After all, aren't you happier about the fact that you were born, then you are about the born of someone you have never even met. So this is going back into like Christmas as being the birthday of, of the Messiah, ignorantly known as Jesus Christ today, which his birthday wasn't during that day. That is actually a worship of the sun God, which all aligns with what's going on in religion. Sun God, moon God, star worship, all of this is um, mentioned in the Bible to not partake in. So every religion, well, of course, the major three, as you can see, um, Christianity, it's a worship of the sun god. That's why they worship on Sunday. Um, you look into that, the days of the week. You look into the Rome translation, Soul's Day, which goes back to Soul. Soul is one of the sun gods of Rome. 
Um, so of course, Christianity of old is different than the Christianity of new as it relates to the Roman Catholic Church. So of course, um, that's why that has been changed. Um, Islam is the worship of the moon um, because their moon god Allah and then Judaism is the worship of the stars. That's why they have a star of Moloch or of course they say the star of David which is not the star of David that's the star of Moloch. Um, After all aren't you happier about the fact that you were born than you are about the birth of someone you have never met. So that's why we see a lot of birthdays on the Roman calendar, like um, MLK Day in honor of MLK's birthday or George Washington's birthday and so forth. They're honoring birthdays, which you should be honoring the day of death more. And we don't see that on any calendar. Or for the matter, aside from religion holiday, religious holidays, why pay higher tribute to the birthdays of the presidents? That's what I mentioned. Or to a date in history than we do to the day we were brought into the greatest of all worlds. Greatest of all worlds. So, of course, the Bible mentions that the world or the earth has been given unto the um, to the heathen, unto the um, to the devil, Satan, and to Satan. So that's why he is saying it's the greatest of all worlds. You being brought into this world is the best day of the year or the best day ever really to be enslaved mentally physically that is the greatest of the world you being brought into this world that's that's the most highest day in this religion despite the fact that some of us may not have been wanted or at least were not particularly planned we're glad even if no one else is that we're here you should give yourself a pat on the back. Yay, happy birthday. Buy yourself whatever you want and pretty much honoring yourself by, you know, people going out um, to restaurants, um, celebrating everybody, wishing you happy birthday, singing you happy birthday um, and um, buying things in honor of you. So this is pretty much the same thing as pagan worship. They brought their offering to their God. This is the same thing. You're bringing the offering unto yourself as God. Treat yourself like the king or God that you are. And that's what a low lot of religions do. They treat themselves as being higher than others as it relates to the most high God. Their pride is being brought before the most high God, above the most high God. And generally celebrate your birthday with as much prompt and uh, ceremony as possible, which we just mentioned. That was never mentioned in the Bible. So, of course, you're now celebrating these days and you do not know which you celebrate for or which you are partaking in. You're worshiping yourself as a God, which is above the most high God. Which goes back into the world, worldly customs. Love of the world, love of worldly customs. Straight facts. This is facts that are proven. No early church endorsed the observance of birthdays. No early church before the Roman Catholic Church endorsed birthdays. Even Islam did not endorse birthdays. And birthdays are worthless in the sight of the Most High Yahweh. They're worthless. Your death is more honorable than your birth. The Redeemer is talking about Yahshua. Told his disciples, remember him in his death. You should remember him in his death. Talking about Passover. Talking about the actual resurrection, not, not the actual Easter in which we celebrate today. It has nothing to do with the Most High or Yahshua. But there is not a word in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation which tells us to celebrate his birthday. Nowhere in the Bible it tells us to celebrate the Most High's birthday or 
the Messiah's birthday or our own birthday or any of the prophets birthday. Nowhere. Death is more honorable than the date of birth. That was proven. There are not biblical holy, no biblical holiday that mentions the date of birth. There is no holiday in scripture that tells us to celebrate the date of birth. The most high Yahweh or Yah gives us holy days to keep in the scripture. Birthdays are not one of them. He gives us holy days, which we should be keeping that these religions do not tell you to keep. So they are not of the most high God. This is a quote that I got off of a, of a website. I can't remember the website. I forgot to actually put the um, quotations and where I got it from. But it says the world has instead followed its own ideas. That goes back to that verse about man-made philosophy and being deceitful. Under Satan's deception, deceptive influence. This is the world of Satan. This is the Satanist controlling this world. That's why you see a whole lot of paganism and a whole lot of man-made um, philosophies in this world that are not aligned to scripture. Under Satan's deceptive influence and produ productive and produced the uh, mishmash of confusion and conflict, com conflicting religious beliefs. So this is being deceitful. You're being deceived, deceived deceited through these religions and produce the mismatch of confusion and conflicting religious beliefs we see in, around the world today. These beliefs are not aligned to scripture. So why are you keeping them? Pagan custom. Now this is goes back to what I've been researching with Islam. And it actually, I, with my previous research with um, the Roman Catholicism and Roman um um, Christianity. Pagan customs were accepted into these worldly religions to increase acceptance. This is what I've researched through both Christianity and Islam. These pagan customs were adapted into the religious beliefs to increase the acceptance into that specific religion. That's facts. I'm going to leave you with this. Hopefully this lesson was all truthful through the eyes of the Most High Yah. If not, I hope he um, and, and, and guides me through the understanding in which I need to better um, these lessons in which I am given. Um, if anything is truthful, all praise to the Most High. If anything is false, please let him guide me into the truth and um, correct myself from here. But of course, I want to lend you with this. Beware. Be careful with what you are celebrating and worshiping. Study and research everything in which you are pertaining and participating in and seeing if it aligns with what is stated in the Bible. You are being deceived and you're learning practices that does not align with scripture. These are the customs of man. Customs of the world, customs of Satan, which bring you into deceit. Your mind has been corrupted. Your understanding has been corrupted. Your mind and your heart has been steered away from the one true God and the ways of the scriptures. So I'm going to leave you with Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Thus says the Most High Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen or dismayed at them. So this is uh, verses two and three that I mentioned earlier in the lesson. And then Colossians chapter two at verse eight, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Please make sure you're aligning everything with scripture and actually researching through history and lineage and the scripture. After the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world, which is the world of Satan, and not after the Messiah Yahshua. With this being said, I hope you have a great Shabbat. Continue to get your rest. Continue to study. And may Most High bless you and, and everyone who is seeking truth. All praise to the Most High. Shalom.